Welcome to Strange Ways TV Week in Review in conjunction with Slicing Up Eyeballs. I'm your host, Velvet Rebel. This week, we have new music from Morrissey and Pet Shop Boys, as well as exciting tour news from a legendary band. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel below so you get notified of all news and Strange Ways shows. The Pet Shop Boys have debuted a third single off their upcoming 14th studio album, Hotspot, a dance track called Monkey Business that will be released next month. It is a disco ball of cool. Listen to this. Everybody get on board and back in town. Monkey business. I'm not leaving till the last joint has shut down. People tell me I'm a legend around these parts. The new single follows the release of Dreamland featuring Ali Alexander of Years and Years and Burning the Heather, which includes an assist from former Sway guitarist Bernard Butler. The 10-track hotspot, recorded mostly at Hansa Studios in Berlin, is due out January 24th. Given the magic of Hansa Studios from David Bowie to U2, this album already feels like it could be truly special. This spring, Morrissey will follow up last year's California Sun record with his 13th studio album. 11-song collection is titled I Am Not a Dog on a Chain. It will be released on March 20th via BMG. The album's lead single, Bobby, Don't You Think You Know, features vocal contributions from R&B legend Thelma Houston. Here's a little taste of that single. You sing for us all the pleasure you bring for us all whatever you sing for us. Ace, track, oh yeah. A bomb, come on now, like mosquito. First impression, fantastic. There is an undercurrent of early 90s Depeche Mode in the music, and his voice sounds alive in the mix. Fanwood can mix Motown soul with English melancholy, it is Morrissey. And the single has again pulled me back into his world. Let's just hope he allows the music to speak for itself during this release. Let us know what you think of the song in the comments below. The album is the ex-Smith singer's first collection of new songs since 2017's Low in High School, which I thought said had some of his finest singles in years. The songs were especially strong on tour with the Hollywood Bowl show being one of my favorite Morrissey shows in years. I'm really excited for this one. The Bauhaus reunion is not dead. In exciting news, the band announced on Friday a third 2020 date, this time in Mexico City. They already have shows lined up in London and then New York City in June. The band played its first concerts in 13 years this fall with three shows at the Hollywood Palladium in LA. Were you there? Tell us what you thought in the comments. It's still not clear if further touring plans are in the works, or is this a series of one-off shows? Let's hope for a full tour, maybe a new album. Well, this is awesome. The Great Artifact Records have offered a free Bandcamp compilation featuring all the artists that they are featuring in this year's South by Southwest showcase. Included on the compilation are actors, Cloud Rat, The Foreign Resort, Otzi, Boots Blacks, and Devours. Fans of this label and post-punk in general will want to check it out on Bandcamp. Last June, we reported a new project called Humanist that features the music of Rob Marshall. The album will feature the music of Mark Gardner from Ride, Mark Lanigan from Queens of the Stone Age and Screaming Trees, and more. But the song that most of you have been anticipating is the collaboration with Dave Gahan from Depeche Mode. That track will be called Shock Collar and is scheduled to be released on Monday, January 13th. Stay tuned to Strange Ways as we will be sure to share it with you when it comes out. In the meantime, have a listen to the first single from Humanist called Ring of Truth. There's a certain uncle vibe to it. The biggest story this week, as it always will be, is David Bowie. We celebrate both his birthday and his death each year during this week. It is hard to look through my record collection and see an artist not influenced by his music, style, and life. While Black Star remains the perfect artistic statement on mortality, I dove deeper into Hours this week, an album that often gets overlooked by fans. Sandwiched between Earthling and Heathen, it is certainly the least experimental of his later albums, but to me, it also sounds like an artist who is truly content.